Glory to God. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure I am created. Greeting to you, my brothers and sisters. I would like to share with you a brief message on the message of redemption in icy water. And I hope you understand this message in deep because we are not here to preach men, but to preach Jesus Christ. But I believe it will be a good idea, just before I go into the topic, just to share with you what was the first uh, message of redemption when Jesus Christ was born over 2,000 years ago. According to the Gospel of Luke from chapter chapter 2, verse 7, it said, And she brought forth her first born son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone out upon them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day the city of David, the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this, be, and this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe lapping swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and good will toward men, which means the good news. And here today I would like to share with you the message of redemption in the icy water. What do I mean by that? You see, in 1912, on April 15, 1912, a Titanic sailed from England to America. And the, the engineer who built the Titanic, he defied God. He said, even God will not sink this ship. And we are told, the history tells us, after a couple of weeks, the Titanic hit a small iceberg and the Titanic was torn apart and sunk in the ocean uh, uh, sea of the Atlantic. What do I mean by that? Today, whether you like it or not, my friend, the entire world, we are in a Titanic situation. Everybody is seeking for someone to rescue them. Everybody is looking for a man or for a spirit to rescue them. And whether you like it or not, my friend, those who came before Jesus and those who came after Jesus were all a liar because none of them can rescue man from eternal punishment. Now, what do I mean by that? Because the gospel is the good news. The gospel is not only the good news, my friend, the gospel is the breathtaking news for every human soul who are in need to be saved from this titanic situation. What do I mean by that? This holy Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, this Bible may not save you from drowning in the water. This Bible may not save you from car crash. This Bible may not save you from the plane crash or train crash, God forbid. But the Bible tells us, certainly, 100%, this Bible has power to change, to save your soul from eternal punishment. And that's what I'm talking about. In that Titanic situation, in the icy water, there was another eight clergymen in that Titanic were sailing from England to America. And I don't know what this eight clergyman did, but I know there was one man who became the hero of the Titanic. It's not Jack. Many people, they call Jack the hero of the Titanic. But today I would like to whisper to you that there was someone else better than, Ty than Jack was in the Titanic. And his name was John Harper, a Scottish pastor who went to the Moody Church in Chicago to preach the glorious gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the history tells us that this man, before the Titanic sank, he was preaching the glorious gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to men and women in the Titanic. And the Bible and the history tells us when the Titanic hit the icy water, Thomas Andrew refused to be rescued by the life jacket and to be rescued by the lifeboat. But you see, because he defied God, and God break the pride of England by a small iceberg. And today, whether you like it or not, my friend, we are all in a Titanic situation. 
and John Harper was in the icy water. He was turning to people around him from one place to another place. He was weak in the flesh, but he was strong in the spirit, telling people, young man, young woman, would you like to be saved? Are you saved? And everybody responded to John Harper, no, I am not saved. And basically, John Harper had his daughter and his sister with him. But he made sure first that his daughter and his sister would get a lifeboat or a life jacket. And then in the icy water, he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the icy water, he tells people to repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. And after four years, when the, when the victim of the Titanic were united in Canada, a man stood up by saying, I am the last convert of John Harper in the icy water. What makes this man, what was the secret behind the courage this man had in the icy water. He gave, actually, he took out his life jacket and he threw it and he gave to that man and he said, hold on to that life jacket because you're gonna need it more than I do. Why do John Harper gave up his life jacket and gave it to a young man in order for him to be saved because John Harper knew that he would die soon in the icy water. Therefore, he gave up that privilege and he gave his life jacket to that man and after four years, that was the last convert of John Harper in the icy water. The question is, my friend, whether you like it or no, one day you and I, we're going to end up in the fire. One day you and I, we're going to end up to be persecuted, not because we are offending, but because the gospel of Jesus Christ is the offense to anybody who do not believe in the message of the gospel, which is Jesus Christ died on the cross in order that you and I may have eternal life. We have the good news. Not only is the good news, my friend, we have the message of love and the message of faith and the message of hope. Today, whether you like it or not, my friend, we are the people of hope which are living in a society and culture dominated by fear. What do I mean by that? What was, let's come back to John Harper first. What was the secret behind the courage John Harper had in the icy water? I will tell you what was it. Pray. Praying was a secret John Harper had in the icy water because he had faith, faith always looked back, he had love, love always goes out and look for people who are in need and then hope always look ahead. And that is what John Harper had in the icy water. He had faith, he knew who he was, he knew who Jesus Christ was, and he had love, a this kind love. Agape love, unconditional love, sacrificial love that no man can give you apart from Jesus Christ. He had the God's kind love. He had the love of Jesus Christ. That's why he removed his life jacket and he threw it to a young man and he said, hold on to that life jacket because you're going to need it more than I want. And then he had hope because he knew that someone would be saved. And after four years, my friend, a young man gave his life to Jesus Christ and he became a pastor. And today, whether you like it or not, my friend, we have the good news for you. We have the message of love. We have the message of peace that every human soul, even non-believer, when I buy my coffee before I go to work, there's the man always said, peace and love. And I said, young man, where do you get peace and love? He said, that's all we need. And I said, don't you know that peace and love is one of the fruit of the spirit we have in Galatians 5, 21 and 22. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperament. That's what we have as the believer of Jesus Christ. Now, I'll come down with that message. As I said in the beginning, the Holy Bible may not save you from the car accident. The Holy Bible may not save you from fire and water drowning in the ocean like John Harper and the rest of the Titanic victim died in the water. This Bible certainly had power to rescue you from the eternal punishment, which is hell. And today I would like to invite you to read the Gospel of John. Today I would like to invite you to give your life to Jesus Christ because I may save your life temporarily for another 10 years, 20 years. A bullet may come to you, a knife may come to you, and I come and I rescue you. But the only person who can give you eternal life is not me, it's not him, but it's not even your husband, God bless him, but it's Jesus Christ. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believed on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lived and believed in me shall never die. In John chapter 10, verse 9, I think he said, 
the thief comes not. He said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Why? The thief comes not, which is the devil. The thief comes not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. As much as was easy for John Harper on the icy water to preach the good news of Jesus Christ, today the message of salvation, today the message of redemption is simple as much as or is simple as much as you open the door and go through a door and Jesus Christ said I am the door by me very man enter in he shall be saved I shall go in and I'll find pasture the message of salvation or the message of redemption is simple as much as you receive a gift a gift is free in Romans chapter 6 verse 23 the, the wage of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. The message of salvation is simple as you eat in bread. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, the bread of God is He who came down from heaven and gave His life unto the world. The message of salvation or redemption is simple as you and I drinking water. And Jesus Christ said, I am the living water. And finally, the message of salvation or the message of redemption is simple as you open the light bulb and Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall no walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. If that is the message of Christ, then who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or prayer, or sword, as it is written for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all this thing, we are more than conquerors through the love of us. For I am persuaded that neither the death, nor life, nor angels, no prince, did you hear? No angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no high, no depth, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let me pray for you, my sisters. Let me pray for you, young man. I don't know who you are, whether you are a Muslim, a Jew, a Christian, non believer, even Sodomite. Let me pray for you. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you individually the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of His Son Jesus Christ. And that's my prayer for the entire world Muslim, Jew, Christian, unfortunately, some Christian, they don't know Jesus Christ. But for you, and for you and myself who believe in Jesus Christ, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his counter upon you and give you peace. Our Father, I always pray with the Lord's prayer, with the help, the passing of prayer. Our Father, we shall in heaven. Not in Saudi Arabia, not in Vatican, not in India, but in heaven. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, not my kingdom, not your kingdom, but his kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. It is a weekly bread, monthly bread, yearly bread, but he said, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors, then he said, lead us not into sin. No, he didn't say that. He said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Why? For sign is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. And may he increase and may I decrease. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we do that. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.